لله رب العالمين الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا حبيبنا محمد عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا أما بعد The brothers and sisters, I was preparing for Jum'ah, the khutbah itself, yesterday night, and I had prepared something completely different than what I'm going to talk about right now. The reason is this morning, my son said something very interesting and that changed my mind completely. He's six years old, and he said, I died when I was born. Everything that I do in life right now is like a dream. I will be born again when I die. When he said that, instantly it didn't dawn on us as to what he was saying. But reflecting on what he had said made me think hard and fast as to what and where that came from. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, children have the most amazing, innocent mind. When they speak, they speak with honesty and truth. They're guided by their fitrah, which is guided by Allah. They're guided by their innocence, which is again guided by Allah. And therefore they don't utter things unless it has some profound meaning. Of course, even in their play, there are great lessons for us to draw. So when he said that, I started thinking. <coughs> the more I thought, the more I began to find myself baffled as to the depth of what he is talking about. You see, brothers and sisters, Allah uses in the Quran يتفكرون, as a phrase over 20 times. يتفكرون, for people who think. For those people. يتفكرون, have the capacity and the ability to think or are willing to use their brain to think. <coughs> there you are my son, six years old, got me thinking. And I haven't stopped thinking about that one sentence he said. He said, and for those of you who have just joined, he said, I died when I was born. Everything that I do in life now is like a dream. I shall be born again when I die. And I want us to think deep and hard about our life and what we do with it, my brothers and sisters, on a daily basis. When was the last time you gave a thought deep and profound that impacted the way you would look at your future? When was the last time you thought and you stopped and you thought and you said to yourself, you know what, I haven't been thinking, I haven't been thinking enough, I've been just trotting along in life without real reflection. When was the last time you and I thought about the purpose of our life? When was the last time you stopped and thought about the method that you have adopted to realize your dream? The job that you do, the business that you run, the car that you drive, the phone that you use, the television that you watch. When was the last time you stopped and thought, what am I doing? Why am I here? What is the purpose of it, of it all? Is this life the beginning or the end or is it just a stepping stone? for something bigger and more important to come. لِقَوْمِ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ People who think. Allah has given special title for people who think. لِقَوْمِ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ People of thinking. People who can think and reflect. My brothers and sisters, you cannot even, you cannot even discover Allah without thinking. You cannot, you cannot even discover your own self without thinking. You cannot discover anything in the world without thinking. In my view, the decline of the Muslim Ummah began when we stopped thinking. I want you to know this very categorically and carefully. The decline of the Ummah on mass began when we stopped thinking. I'll give you an example. If you go to Hajj or Umrah right now, Umrah right now, Hajj in the month when Hajj is, you will find Mecca full of people. 
In fact, more people go to Umrah than Hajj <coughs> over a period of time. If you think about it, there are billions of people, 1.8 billion Muslims in the world today, and millions of them pray Jum'ah every Friday. Millions of Muslims fast in the month of Ramadan, do Taraweeh, a long prayer at the end of Taraweeh every day for 30 days. And yet, the desperate state of this Ummah is an indication of something drastically gone wrong. Something is wrong. Our du'as are not being accepted. Our prayers are not being useful. Our fasting are not being transformative. Our hajj is not unifying our hearts and our minds. Our state is not changing. In fact, we are getting worse by the day. Something has gone drastically wrong with this ummah. And I call this Ummah's lack of thinking as the most endemic trouble that is engulfing this Ummah today. We have stopped thinking. We become zombies today. We pray like a zombie. We fast like a zombie. We we'll go to Hajj and Umrah like a zombie. It's become a fashion statement. I've been to Umrah, I've been to Hajj. In fact, before, people used to delay their Hajj and Umrah until they're older because they thought, let me see all I can and at the end I'll cleanse my card and I'll be okay. Of course, erroneous thinking. Nowadays, young people, very young, go to Hajj and Umrah. But again, <coughs> the intentions have changed. They go to Hajj and Umrah as a fashion statement, as a symbol of their status. I've been to Umrah and Hajj, I'm young. Again, erroneous idea. My brothers and sisters, thinking will liberate you, will make you better. What makes a human a human is its capacity to think. When he Azza wa made Adam alayhi salatu salam, he made Adam physically. Adam didn't have the capacity to think. He made Adam physically there. What can Adam do? When he breathed into Adam the ruh that he had promised, that ruh then sparked life into his body and then he gave him the knowledge and once he had given, the, given him the knowledge his brain began to tick and think that's why Allah put him in the heavens and in heavens everything is halal but he made haram in heaven one tree for Adam why would Allah make haram in a place of halal so that Adam could be tested so that he can use his brain, so that he can establish right from wrong, so that Adam could be put to a test to see if he can think rightly and correctly. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, the journey with Adam began, but the journey of thinking has not stopped. But you and I have stopped thinking. We don't think enough. Why do you pray? What's the purpose of prayer? What is the purpose of prayer? You need to think. What good is prayer for you and I if there is no social benefit from prayer? Allah says that in the Quran, Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. Prayer will prevent you from fahshai and munkar, evil and shameful deeds. And yet, evil and shameful deeds are not being prevented. Are we thinking? Muslims are a group of people today who are very emotionally charged, but not reflective enough. Muslims are a group of people today who are very angry very quickly, but not thinking enough. Muslims are a group of people eager to fight and they give their lives, but not think about what they're doing. Just think about the consequences of the actions of a few people without thinking. Whether it is ISIS crisis, whether it is the troubles in Syria, whether it is troubles in Somalia, whether it is the dictatorial regimes ruling the Muslim world, whether it is the Nazi governments of Bangladesh, Pakistan and any other, it's all the same. Lack of thinking. Lack of thinking. Lack of thinking. When British government, our government in this country, develops its policies, it thinks about 100, 200, 300 year impact. It does what we call short term, medium term and long term strategies. What would my policy today manifest in 20 years, in 30 years, in 50 years, in 100 years, in 200 years? That's how they strategize. In 2001, 
when the neoconservatives in America wrote their ideals for to, uh, uh, for the year two, uh, for for the century of 2000, they wrote that century of 2000 is going to be the American century. They were planning for the entire century, not for one day. It's going to be the century of America. What about Muslims? <coughs> How do we think? Look at the stupidity of the lack of thinking amongst ourselves amidst where we live in this country. This is our home. Opportunities galore. <coughs> Everything is available for you to do good and excel. And yet we can't think without becoming crazy sometimes. Our boys and girls run away to join ISIS. What thinking do we have? <coughs> what thinking do we have? Our teachers get prosecuted for wanting to join and fight ISIS. Six years in prison for a chemistry teacher for wanting to go and join ISIS to fight. What good is there to fight with ISIS, my brothers and sisters? A murdering regime, a despotic group of people gathered from all over the world wanting hell bent on violence, nothing else. That is not Islam. Think. Don't become emotional. Brother, it's an Islamic state. Khilaf has been declared. What? Any lunatic crackpot declares Khilafah and you want to give your allegiance to him? No. Islam has given clear guidelines, Sharia guidelines as to what is right and what is wrong. Who can be the Khalif? There are criteria. What of the what constitutes an Islamic state? There are guidance and clear guidance. Inept, uneducated, ill educated, misguided, unthinking people cannot be the leaders of the Ummah. Can't be. That's why in the Muslim world today, what's happening is reflected by a statement of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ali ibn Abi Talib was resting, a man came and complained, Ya Ali, why is there so much fitna at your time? When there was no fitna at the time of Abu Bakr and Umar. Ali looked at the man and he said something very beautiful. He said, Abu Bakr and Umar were ruling people like me. And I'm ruling people like you. <coughs> if you want to know why crackpots, dictators and despots are ruling the Muslim world, just look at ourselves. Just look at the Muslim woman at large from Indonesia to Morocco. Just look at it. Look at the standard that we have. I'm talking about collective standard. Individually, there are people in this room, across the Muslim world, who are brilliant individually. I agree. They're super genius individually. But individuals don't make a society on their own. Individual effort, united, collective, organized, is what is an effective society. I believe lack of thinking, the waning of thinking has created that vacuum. Ask, you, ask yourselves a question, my brothers and sisters. Do you know to what capacity you can think? No, you don't. You don't even know the depth of the capacity that Allah has given you to think. You don't know where you can stop thinking. You don't. Because you don't know how powerful your brain is. Nobody knows the power of their own brain. And you carry it every day. You use it, you, you use it every day. If Allah wanted you to know the limits of your own thinking, He would have put a limit to your head. But He didn't. In other words, he has, no, he has not put any limit to how much you can think. That's why you're not punished for your thinking, alhamdulillah. You will be punished if your thinking becomes an action. But you're not punished for your thinking, remember that. Allah hasn't put a curtain around, boundary around what you can think and what you can't think. He has given you guidelines of the actions that emanate from your thinking and if you go beyond the boundaries of Allah Azza wa Jal, you will face consequences of course in this world and the hereafter but don't allow your mind to be narrowed to a small sphere I call blinkered vision and blinkered manner of thinking think the unthinkable think the unimaginable <coughs> don't get alarmed Allah says in the Quran uh, uh, pray as though you can see Allah. Can you see Allah? No. Can you imagine Allah? No. 
And yet Rasulullah is saying, Allah is telling you and I to pray like as if we can see Allah. In other words, imagine Allah's presence right in front of you. You can't think of Allah physically because we have no form of what Allah looks like. We can't because it's beyond our brain. Our brain can't even fathom it. But you're encouraged to think of Allah's presence right in front of you. The unthinkable, the unimaginable. Our problem is we've stopped thinking. Not only have we stopped thinking, we have an allergic reaction to others thinking. Brother, don't think too much. Safarullah, your thinking is in the brain. I've heard of those statements from people who are foolish. How dare you say that? Allah has given me the brain. He has made a difference between me and the animals because I can think. If it wasn't for thinking, Adam would not have made that mistake in the first place. He thought, but he thought wrong. When Shaitan whispered into his head, Adam <coughs> thought wrong. His conclusions were wrong. And because his conclusions were wrong, we know what is wrong and what is right. If Adam stopped thinking, you and I would be in big trouble. Brothers and sisters, think. For without thinking, you are not a people deserving and worthy of Allah's blessings and esteem that He has promised. You and I are not worthy unless we think in the Quran repeatedly. Will you not then think? Will you not then conceive, understand? Constantly in the Quran, Allah is reminding us about thinking and reflection. In the Quran, Allah's name is repeated most often. Allah, the word Allah, is repeated most often. The subject of Allah, the topic of Allah, is repeated most often. The subject of thinking is repeated as second most and second most frequent. The subject of thinking, contemplation, fikr is called thinking. For people who can think. This entire guidance of Allah is useless for a people who can't think. Brothers and sisters, thinking requires a process. Thinking requires rationale. Thinking requires your capacity and the development of your thinking. Thinking requires knowledge. You cannot think right unless you've got knowledge. I remember when I was traveling in one village I went and the local agricultural officer was advising the local farmers as to how they should farm differently. And the local farmers rebelled, saying our forefathers had not farmed like this, we're not farming. <coughs> So the agricultural officer said, okay, go ahead. That year they had a devastating crop. The local farmer came back to advise them, saying, I told you so. So they changed their method and they began to yield better farm. We have the same story of the time of Rasulullah When a farmer was listening to the Prophet of Allah over an issue of farming and his farm didn't yield much fruit, he complained, Ya Rasulullah, you gave me the advice about farming. But Rasulullah said, I'm not a farmer. I only gave you my advice, he didn't have to listen to it. Why? You need to think. The companions used to think. Even when Rasulullah would say, think, say things, they would think. When uh, Ka'b ibn Malik and two of his other companions did not go to battle of uh, Tabu. You remember the story? Ka'b ibn Malik was isolated from the community for 40 days. Nobody spoke to him. Long story, I'm not going to tell you the whole story, but the last part is beautiful. Rasulullah announced that Kaab, we can talk to you. You're no longer in isolation or boycott. Kaab came to the Prophet of uh, the, the, uh, the mosque of the Prophet. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I want to ask you a question. Did you forgive me, Kaab? Or did Allah send you revelation? <coughs> Rasulullah said, Oh Kaab, I didn't forgive you, or it's not my verdict. Allah sent revelation to say Kaab is innocent. <coughs> Kaab is questioning Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by thinking, using his brain. Every single aspect of our deen must be questioned and understood and accepted through yaqeen, conviction. Not like a blind follower. This ummah at this moment in time is being led by blinds and we have become all blind. I want us to open our eyes. 
Let's become the people who can think. Let's become the people who can think. Strategic thinking. How can we make our environment better? How can we change the current perception of Islam and the Muslims in the British society that is dominated by the negativity of every day? How can we change that perception? How can we challenge? It's not good you going up and down the high street and delivering a lecture. Nobody's going to listen to you because they'll think you're a lunatic. This is, a, this is a sophisticated society. It's not the marketplace of Bangladesh or India or Pakistan or Morocco or Somalia. It's not. It's Britain. Here people are 99% educated. <coughs> they read. They think. And guess what? The first revelation of Allah is called read, iqra. And if I was to ask you all right now, and I can prove my point if I did, I won't. If I asked you this question, how many of you have read one book in the last six months? Don't answer it. Ask yourself this question. An entire book, from the beginning to the end. Entire book. How many of you have read in the last six months? Forget six months, last one year. Brother, I don't read, somebody said to me the other day. Somebody complained to me, brother, your Facebook posts are too long. I can't read them, it's too much. I said, Ajeeb, oh Muslim, how could you complain about reading? When reading is what liberated you and I. When reading what made you and I the best of people in the world. And you're complaining today, I can't read. People of thinking, don't complain about reading. Because reading, writing, gaining knowledge will empower you, open up your brain to think more. Brother, I only read the Quran. Of course you must read the Quran. Of course you must. I don't read anything else. Of course you read the Quran and more. Read the tafsir of the scholars. Read about philosophy, history, learn about the people of the past. Why does Allah talk about the people of the past in the book of His own revelation? Why? Because you and I need to draw lessons from them. Learn about tomorrow, learn about science, learn about technology, learn about politics, learn about society, learn about psychology. Learn, learn, learn. It's only through learning we will be able to defeat everything, including extremism and terrorism. Because uh, for extremists and terrorists, knowledge is their biggest enemy. If you and I become knowledgeable, they will have no room. They will have no room to roam around. They will not be able to brainwash our kids to joining their crazy lunatic circus. They will not be able to brainwash our young people in thinking that being stupid and lunatic is acceptable. They will not think, they will not be able to brainwash our children thinking that carrying out bombs and attacks in our country here is acceptable. They will not get away with such crazy idea if we become a people who are thinking. It's only those who don't think behave like that. It's like that boat. You're riding a boat and there's a conflict between the upper deck and the lower deck. People of the upper deck are complaining to the people of the lower deck, guys, you're not letting us having any water. <coughs> Sorry, lower deck people are saying to the upper deck people, guys, you're not letting us out, we can't have any water. The guys on the upper deck says, well, so what? Well, the guys on the lower deck says, okay. You don't, want us have, you don't want us to come out to have any water? We're going to dig a hole on the hull of the boat. We're closest to the water. Let's dig a hole. What's going to happen to the people? They're all going to sink. They're all going to sink. This is a hadith of Rasulullah. There are people, there are lunatics in our community who don't think. They think digging a hole on the boat that they're riding is okay. They think the hand that feeds them, biting it is okay. It isn't okay. It isn't okay. Thinking people are constructive. The day before yesterday, I was invited by an organization to go and speak. Two days before the speech itself, I got a phone call. I was uninvited. Why? Because the uh, Zionist lobby and the gay lobby have lobbied the organization saying, I am anti-Semitic and homophobic. So don't invite it. So they are invited. What should be my reaction? My reaction must be measured. My reaction must be smart and clever. There is, a, some, there is something called law in this country. There is something called law in this country. 
I have the recourse to be able to challenge that through judicial review. That is part and parcel of the law of Islam. I could scream and shout, how dare you? I could cause a big fuss, how dare you? That's not going to change anything. Muslims are people of thinking. We don't react. Yes, there are people being killed around the world, I know. I know there are people who are suffering in the world. I know. I know Iraq has been in trouble. I know. Syria has been burning. I know. Palestine has been occupied. I know. Somalia has been in trouble. I know. Bangladesh is going out of control. I know. Pakistan is in trouble. I know. I know all these troubles. And I'm, see I'm, I'm seething like you are. I'm angry like you are. But I don't have the same solution as some lunatics have. Hundred years, lunacy and anger and unthinking has insulted. Has absorbed you for the last hundred years. Something went wrong in the way we think. These things need to be sorted out, I agree. But we need to become smart through thinking to come up with a solution that is better. Allah give us the strength and the ability to become people of thinking and strengthen us in our iman and accept our words. Thank you very much. الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي كفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد. Dear brothers and sisters, this morning I was reading a hadith of Rasulullah Sallam where Rasulullah Sallam said, "Don't become hard and harsh on yourself, for Allah will become hard and harsh on yourself." Do you understand? Hadith of Rasulullah Sallam reported by Abu Dawood. Do not become harsh on yourself or hard on yourself, for Allah will become hard and harsh on yourself. This meaning, I could do a khutbah on this, this is part of a hadith actually. I want to finish my statement today of people who think on this word. We're in trouble, I know. But we don't give up. Wala tahinu, wala tahzanu. What does Allah say? Do not give up and do not despair. Do not give up and do not despair. Never give up, in fact. Wala tahinu, wala tahzanu. Never give up and never despair. He Azzawajal has promised. in kuntum If you believe, Allah will give you the highest of return and status. So we don't give up even though we're in trouble. We don't become harsh on ourselves and people around even though we are in trouble. We need to become smart. We need to become smart. Clever. Educated. Learn from our Jewish cousins how to become smart and powerful. About 200,000 Jewish people live in this country. <coughs> Most powerful people in this country. And rightly so. Why should they be powerless? Smart, educated, in places where things matter. You and I are 1.2.5 million or more. We don't even have proportionate number of MPs in the parliament. Astaghfirullah, brother. MPs, how are Somebody said to me last time when I was standing for election. Hey, brother, wake up! Which country do you live in? <coughs> you don't like it here? Go back to where you come from. <coughs> or a place where you think you'll fit in. Simple question to you and I. Are we being smart? No. Our education system, we have no influence. Our local council, we have very little influence. In our governance, we have very little influence. In the parliament, we have very little influence. We have no influence in the House of Lords. We have no influence in the local council. We have very little influence in the banks. We have no influence in the marketplaces. We have no influence in the economy. We have very little influence because we are not thinking. Do you understand, my brothers and sisters? My plea to you at all is, let us think. Let us think. Let us think. For thinking will liberate us, inshallah. Let us become... Thinkers, for thinkers of today will be the leaders of tomorrow. Ya Alhamdul Rahimin, Ya Kabul Akramin, accept our prayers, Ya Allah. Accept our dua, Ya Allah. Ya Alhamdul Rahimin, make us a people who can think, Ya Allah. Ya Alhamdul Rahimin, Ya Kabul Akramin, enable us and empower us, Ya Allah. Ya Kabul Akramin, Ya Alhamdul Rahimin, bestow your mercy upon us, Ya Allah. Bestow your mercy upon us, Ya Allah. Unite our hearts, Ya Allah. Unite our hearts, Ya Allah. Free all the parts of the world that is in trouble, Ya Allah. Free every part of the world that is in trouble, Ya Allah. Free every part of the world that is occupied, Ya Allah. Free every part of the world that is ruled by dictators and despots, Ya Allah. Rabbana, taqabbal minna inna kanta samul alim. Wa tuba alayna ya maulana inna kanta tawabur rahim. Inna Allah ya'muru bil-laddu bil-ihsan. 
وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعلكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروني ولا تكفرون والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة